Greetings, I am Elijah. Welcome, Elijah. And how is everyone today? And I hope you, you are feeling a positive energy. Yes. It is good. Today I want to speak to you briefly about technology. And the reason why I want to do this is because it is interesting how technology is affecting all of your lives. Be careful. Because now technology takes on a life of its own in some ways. Remember that with the help of many of the species out there and with the advancement of technology within your governments and within your population, they are now able to listen to you, see you, and understand you if they want to. So, I'm not saying to change your life in any way with technology or television or anything of this nature, but I want you to resonate with that which you are using and viewing. Because there may be messages coming just to you because you know about the things of the outer worlds, the things of spirit the things of fourth dimension, and they may be just sending it through a fourth dimensional channel to find who you are. Now, if you feel this kind of resonation, please put down that particular piece of technology and do some praying about what that is about. At this time, control is a huge issue. Your governments, not just those of the United States or Europe or Russia, but governments all over your planet want to know what people are doing that know about communications with the astral, communications with the alien species that are around, communications with fourth dimensional anomalies and ships so you know that you are probably in their um, on their radar so to speak so feel that resonation that to know when is the right time to speak and when is the right not time to s abstain from certain technologies now that is not a frightening thought it is actually one of great power for you because, to tell you the truth, since they know who you are, you, they consider you someone of some power, some control, some interest of some sort. And they're not going to harm you, but they're going to listen to everything that you say and watch things that you do, as, as you may know. And... Sometimes there are signals in your television sets that can actually see you as you're watching your television. Now, do not be frightened of that unless you're sitting in your underwear. But even that they don't care about. But I will tell you this. They want to know any interactions that you have with aliens, with those that are not part of the earth. Now, that does not seem to be a great spiritual message today, but it is a message that God wants you to know about because God is on your side. God loves each and every one of you, and he loves that you're aware, but he wants you to be even more aware of him than he is than you are of the aliens that are around you or the governments that are around you because he is your strength he is the one that will help you stand up against unfairness and un, uh, things that are not correct injustice he is the one that will guide your path and he is the one that will keep you safe so even though I tell you these things, and I'm saying this not to alarm you, but just to make you aware. 
And some of you are not alarmed at all. You're going, I think I already knew that. Some of you are saying, I knew that more than a year ago, or more than two years ago, or more than that even. But I just want you to know God is on your side and will take care of you no matter what. Now, there are things coming that may seem unpleasant to the world and even to you, but they are necessary to wake people up, to put them in place, to make them aware of their missions, that they have actual fourth dimensional outlooks within them, that they have fourth dimensional energy that is waking them up. So now, this is the time of great change. And I told Jim that I would not speak about the alignment today because the alignment speaks for itself in many ways. And it's been advertised and information is available about it in many, many different places. All you have to do is seek and you will find. So therefore, I do not have to go into all that. You are already aware of it. You are already informed. And so I don't have to go into that information. But yet I'll spend this time with you speaking about things that you need to know and understand. My first thought was to let you know about the technology that is there and that is looking at you and listening to you. But my second thought is to let you know about God, who is also aware of you, watching you, and listening to you. Unlike technology and unlike governments, he is not there to spy, but to help and to encourage and make you stronger and braver and bring you to your fruition, if you will, bring you into a thought process where you can accept your future and accept what is coming next. Of course, it looks as though there are many signs and wonders and earthquakes in diverse places and things of this nature that would speak of the end times. But the end times are not the end. They are the beginning times of newness, of freshness. Of course, there were some things that will pass away, but they need to go. They are not necessary anymore. This negativity is not necessary anymore. These certain things are not necessary for a a wonderful life on this planet anymore. So things will change. Purge. It will be purged. Your lives as God purges your life. And your outlook. Does not that outlook move into the world and start to purge it in some way? Are you not the instruments? of this change? Are you not the people who are more aware of it than anyone else? Allow yourself to be who you are. Allow yourself to be strong in the identity of change and fearless moving forward. You are protected. Now, some of you may pass in a great cataclysm, but if, if that happens, you are meant to pass. Your time will be over, and perhaps your life will mean a great deal to someone, and your experience and your example will live on. Do not be afraid of these things. It is not a time for fear. It's a time for courage, a time for change. And yes, there are times for our Savior to come back. Remember that. 
it is time for him to speak. I know God wants a greater relationship with each of you in some way. He wants you to know that between you and him, there is nothing that can block that relationship, except perhaps yourself. But he is open for it. He is open to speak directly to you. And I know that that is taught on your planet that he just doesn't do that. That it has never been, that he has only done that a few times in history. But why should it be that God cannot speak to you directly? Why should it be that he would hold his voice away from you? He does not want to. It is time to hear his voice. It is time to hear his direction. It is time for him to use all the things around you to lift you up. To lift you up. Now, I know, I get preachy. I'm sorry about that. But it is who I am. <laughs> so I will say that to you in great love. It is time for you to be lifted up and hear the voice of God. Listen for it. There are many of, the, of you out there that are falling to pieces that will hear this message. That you are falling to pieces because you just, the energies are just too strong or you can't keep it together. You will be whole. You will come together you will understand that god is going to do this to you to bring you into the understanding that when you come back together from falling apart that you are stronger and more resolute than ever bring yourself back together with God's help, you don't have to do it alone. There may be people all around you shooting you down or bringing their energy to you that you do not want. But that does not mean you must accept it. That does not mean that this is your future. That does not mean that they are there to destroy you. Even though they may be, they are not there to destroy you because they will not. Believe that God believes in you. Believe that God believes in you because he does. He believes in your mission. He believes in your person. He believes that you can do what he has asked you to do. And some of you say, he hasn't asked me to do anything. I'm here and I don't feel that he's asked me to do a single thing. Guess what? You may be doing it and not even knowing it. If you believe in God and that you believe that he is the creator of all things, the knower of all things, the understander of all things, then you may be being used and not even know. Your example may be the brightest light in the neighborhood. Your light may be shining in places that is making people look and be more aware of who they are and want to be more like that light they see, instead of filled with the negativity of everything around them, with society's answer to every question that is not quite true, with the grayness. They want the light to cut through that, and it does. With the karma of this planet, 
let it cut through. Let God cut through that gray. Let God cut through all those things that are not quite right. Let it happen. Don't be afraid. Stand up. If they try to shoot you down, are you going to accept that? If you know that you are right, how can you sit back down? How can you sit down when you know you should be standing? Are there any questions? Yes, uh, Sheer has a question. Sheer. Hello, Elijah. How are you? I am wonderful. Um, I want to ask. We had the different celestial events like the blood moon, the energy cloud, now the alignment. Is there anything to come in next uh, month or years that we should be aware of? Of course there is. Uh, I mean, but make yourself aware through spirituality, not through what other people say or even what I say. Because every event to come from now on will be personalized. It is part of who you are to find the energies that are coming and to make them part of yourself or to reject them if you should. Right now is a time of great energetic input impulse. You're getting energies from the sun. You're getting energies from Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus. You're getting energies from the center of the galaxy. You're getting energies from Mother Earth. All these energies you can deal with in a way that is most beautiful. And for fourth dimensional people, they will deal with these energies in the proper ways. Um, also, today I actually felt very wonderful the past uh, two weeks were kind of rough sometimes, like you feel a certain pressure. I, was, I know that it, it because of the alignment. I was just wondering now that it's going to return to this alignment. Is it going to be another two weeks of discomfort or is it going to be different? That is up to you. You must feel and accept the positive energies and not the negative ones. This alignment is like the spine of the universe at this moment. It's giving upright stance to some ideas, some meanings, some beauty, and some prophecy. Okay, thank you very, very much, and happy Rosh Hashanah. Happy Rosh Hashanah. Thank you. Did anyone else have any questions maybe in your room? It is not important that people have any questions at this okay. time. Okay, perfect. Because mm. I know that they are, they are at a loss at some point to know what I am saying directly. But it will sink in and it will be part of who they are. I know this. Well, thank you for that sharing because it's an amazing energetic time at the moment. And Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. And it is a very positive time for all of you who have great missions. It is a, a jump-off point. Some of your missions have already started, but some of them of you are saying, I, I don't know if I have one, but you do. You may be holding light in this on for this planet. You may be holding light for the whole solar system, but some things are not meant to be known quite yet. So hang in there. Continue to love unconditionally, which is the most difficult things human can do. You, many of you get angry easily. Remember, turn, remember not to get that angry because they are children of God, just as you are. And the reason that you are getting angry is to show that you need some 
more light and you need to shed that at least part of it righteous indignation is one thing but just getting mad over social and political things is not necessary you can stand strong and not be upset when you are in the right many times you get upset because they are hitting the nail on the head with you they are pointing out something within you that needs to change you are identifying with someone else's emotions that you need to change think about that but they yelled first oh yes and that's within you too so you need to yell back so is it them or you Is it them or is it you? Are they pushing your buttons intentionally? Or are you giving them exactly what they want? Are you breaking down communications? Or are you reinforcing them? Once anger starts and communications are like this, they break down in the in the course of anger because they become selfish you're only saying your part they are only saying their part listening is not really part of it you are only just defending your own point of view you're not listening to their point of view any longer Remember that. Anger is one of the issues that so many humans have trouble with because of how difficult and harsh this reality is. But remember, return love for evil. It will confound them. It will absolutely yes. confound them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. If it's time for me to go, there are others that want to speak. Um, there is one question from in the chat from um, Hak Newman Solskan, Solsan, very nice name, very hard. He says, I'm doing my mission in Southeast Asia in the, uh, and would like to know if there's an important message for me. Thanks, Sam, he said. Yes, Sam, that is a difficult place to be doing your mission. That's a place where there is a lot of people that have a lot of very strong opinions. It's a place where it's hard to break through without unconditional love. And my suggestion to you is to remain unconditionally open and loving. Listen more than you speak. And when you speak, speak directly with love to that particular question or that particular comment. You must let them know that love is the center of the universe, the center of all things. And without that love and without the unconditional portion of it, your mission becomes even more difficult. But I see, Sam, that you are doing a wonderful job and you will move forward. And your, the light is on your path. Continue to draw strength and stand up strong and courageously for what you believe is right. Shed all those things within you that you know do not serve you. I'm not saying to give up your fun times or goodnesses or things that calm you down or any of that. I'm just saying that there are th things within you that do not serve you. Give those things up. Anything that tends to relax you or make you happy, you must keep. <laughs> it is a harsh reality. And I love you dearly. Move forward. Be strong, and I give you my blessing. 
Thank you. Thank you, Elijah. Is there any other questions in the room? I'm leaving now. There is okay. another that wants to come, and I will let them through. Thank you very much. Much Thank love you to you all, and may God be with you. Call on him every moment. You can say thank you and praise him and bring the things to you that you need for your mission by thanking every moment, talking every moment to God. You do not have to be in a meditative state to be with God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Namaste to you. Much Namaste. love. Much love.